And now at Staples, save $50 on your print purchase of $150 or more. Offer N61. Visit staples.com slash print for details. Staples, your local print and marketing expert. WMAL Traffic and Weather, Steve Hershorn in the Hadid Carpet Cleaning Traffic Center. Head over to 270 northbound in the local lanes just after Shady Grove Road. Report of an accident involving a pedestrian police on the scene, but there is no delay so far. That's northbound 270 local lanes just after Shady Grove Road. Through lanes there are open. Southbound 270 is still delay-free all the way down from I-70 to the Beltway. No problems there. Around the Beltway, still looking pretty good. Inner loop and outer loop. Delay free. 95 in Virginia is going to be slow from Dale City up to 123 and then approaching the Fairfax County Parkway. After that, 395 still looking good all the way up to the 14th Street Bridge. Now, now. on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. 607 this Friday morning on O'Connor and Company. Thanks for tuning in here and thanks for bearing with my... Uh, I don't know. I guess my voice is at about seventy percent now. I'm finishing the week strong here, Julie. I'm gonna. Yes, I'm gonna. I will not have a voice just in time to be able to recover for two days. So I'll be back <laughs> at full strength on Monday. Nice. It's not because I'm working too hard. It's because I've got that bug. You had this bug earlier I, in the week, yeah. didn't you? It's still lingering a little. Yeah. You are patient, X. Coming up at seven oh five, Hung Cow running for Senate. <laughs> there it is. At 735, Alyssa D'Souza, Washington, D.C., resident, talking about a crime wave in the Navy Yard. 805, Pat Harrity, Fairfax County Supervisor. 830, Congressman Chip Roy. Wow. Larry O'Connor alongside alongside Julie Gunlock. Good morning. Good morning. So we woke up this morning with news that a a teenager has been arrested in Montgomery County, Maryland. Uh, This is a teenager who threatened to shoot up Wooten High School as well as uh, potentially an elementary school in Montgomery County. Uh, the person is named Andrea Yi, whose preferred name is Alex and identifies as male. So this is a transgender individual, which is interesting to me because in all of the news write-ups, uh, if, if this person had just won some sort of scholarship, uh, if Andrea Yi had just uh, been named valedictorian, and Andrea Yee goes by Alex and is identified as transgender, then all the news reports would just say, look at how this young man is doing such a great job. Look at this. But they would never even make mention of the fact that the you know person is transgender. and that, but, but because it's a crime now, it is interesting to me that they are emphasizing the fact that this is a transgender individual. And yet in the write-ups about this person, they still emphasize the preferred pronouns that the attempted mass school shooter demands that you use to warp the English language. Why go out of your way to say that this person's name is Andrea and then say he and him and his? It's it's nonsensical, and nobody can explain to me the logical use of male pronouns when every article goes out of their way to say, this is a young woman named Andrea Yee who goes by Alex and identifies as a male. Well, then why why go one way or the other? Either it's Alex and it's a he, or it's Andrea and she's a she. Yeah. All right, well, so setting, setting that part aside and how the media is covering this story, the 18-year-old has now been charged with threats of mass destruction. The FBI is investigating. This involves Wooten High School and Lakewood High School. A 128-page manifesto with detailed fantasies of shooting up schoolrooms and specifically the elementary school because little children are easier targets. Now, uh, the suspect claims that this was a work of fiction and yet also refers to the document as a memoir. Mm. Uh, They uh, also witnesses and the police, according to the Channel 7 write-up, were concerned with many of the elements that appeared to be too realistic. Ye referred to the manifesto as a memoir or an autobiography. Rockville City Police later contacted and they conducted a welfare check on Ye. Ye's father allegedly told police that he was not concerned with Ye's mental status because he was certain Ye would contact their therapist if oh, there was great. any concern. Um, 
and and of course, listen, this is thank God the police intervened. Uh, there's been a statement from Montgomery County Public Schools about this. Um, and thank God that this was caught before anything horrible happened. But it is impossible to look at this story and not suggest that maybe, maybe this, this um, uncritical march through the uh, immediate transgender uh, uh, therapy that is demanded by schools and counselors and the medical profession right now, that the second somebody has any sort of inkling that they might be, you know, that they may have issues with their body as they're about to go through puberty or what have you, that they immediately go on these hormone blockers and and hormone therapies, puberty blockers and all of these things. There are ramifications from this. There are results from this. And clearly this person has... <laughs> Again, well, Larry, I'm... in fact, this teen has been in and out of psychiatric treatment since 2022 um, uh, and hasn't actually physically attended school since then. Yeah. So this person, um, you know, for several years now has, I mean, to be in and out of psychiatric hospitals, yeah. um, there's significant mental health issues going on. And yet, you know, they likely pump this girl full of either blockers or or testosterone. testosterone. We do yeah. not know. We do not know the effects of these cross hormone drugs on on young people. And to do that to someone who is obviously psychologically broken yeah. already who uh, is extremely yeah. dangerous. They're, they're, and this is why England has now stopped this practice. Yes. It's why other Western nations have stopped this practice. It doesn't sound like this girl was getting the help she needs. And and by the way, if you Google transgender mass shootings, all you will see is page after page after page of fact check saying there's no rise in violent activities at the hands of transgender individuals in this country. And yet major mass shootings that we know about that make headlines over the past year, two years, have involved children, teenagers, who have been pumped full of drugs. Yes. The Colorado Springs shooter was non-binary. The Nashville shooter was yes. transgender. The Aberdeen shooter was trans. The Denver shooter identified as trans. And there have been more. And and again, far be it for me to run contrary to the the... Uh, the mind meld of the mainstream media who refuses to actually take a critical eye at this, lest they be called homophobic, transphobic, yep. or whatever name. But but here's the beauty of what we do: they already call us that. We can we can do critter news about squirrels in your okay. garbage, and they'll say in some way we did it in a homophobic or transphobic right. way. Right. So you know that that gives us permission. Apparently, we don't care what they're going to call us. Because we care more about innocent children whose lives are being destroyed, including Andrea Yee, the suspect here, who even by by the media continuing to bend over backwards and use male pronouns when describing the story, they are fueling the dementia that we're in the middle of right now. Yeah, there there is no you know what coming up. I want to play for you some audio from our friend Billboard Chris, who just had an interview the other day. About, about that story. He's like, listen, if a child is going through something and they want you to use their pronouns, what's the harm in that? Well, there is harm in that. That's right. And the harm continues here. And I want you to hear it in a compassionate way because the fact of the matter is, here's the little dirty little secret. Those of us who actually want to tell the truth about this story and about this phenomenon in our society, those of us who are deeply concerned about our children and who actually want to be fact-based when we describe this, we're the ones who are compassionate. We are the ones who are actually trying to save lives here. So I want to share that with you, too, around this incredibly disturbing and serious story right in our backyard in Rockville, Maryland. Andrea Yee now arrested for a, an attempted or, or suspected plan for a mass school shooting. And it just so happens, not just so happens that this person is also transgender and identifies as a male. And there's no critical examination as to the drugs, the therapies, the psychoanalysis that has led us to this point here. It's 615 WMAL, traffic and weather every 10 minutes, first on the fives. 
with Steve Hershorn in the Hadid Carpet Cleaning Traffic Center. WMAL, making sense of party politics because somebody's got to hold their feet to the fire. Download the WMAL app to stream us for free. And by the way, one other thing that needs to be pointed out here as I see these stories, and one of the reasons that I really get kind of emotional and compassionate about this is because um, so many of these children are on the autism spectrum. Oh, yeah. And they're, and that's not being treated. That's not being diagnosed. That's not being worked with. My son is on the autism spectrum. And it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of work, by the way, for parents to handle that and deal with it in a smart, compassionate way to make the most out of the child's abilities and not completely constantly dwell on the challenges that your child has. Instead, actually focusing on the great things that your child can do and emphasize those things working around the roadblocks that you have. Because guess what? Your child didn't come out of the box perfect like you somehow thought that he would because none of our children are perfect. But instead, parents and the medical profession and uh, other the education profession, they just decide to put everybody into this category of transgender well, and, and gender dysphoria. And Larry, one other thing about kids with autism, and you know this quite well, is that uh, children with autism, one of the sort of personality sort of traits is that they focus they hyper 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 focus on something that's right for Obsess. uh and and then they might switch and then they focus on that thing intensely and yeah. so it that's what makes them really vulnerable to this kind of if you introduce concepts to them and it it sort of la they latch onto it it is very hard to shift their attention off of it. And so when you introduce concepts like transgenderism to this vulnerable population, you get these kids who, again, intensely focus on it. That's right. And then fully want to transition, fully want to alter their bodies. Then you pump them full of drugs. Yes. You pump them full of hormones when their body is already creating hormones. And then you put contra drugs in there to stop their body from pumping the natural hormones right. that they're right. creating. right. All right, so Billboard Chris, as I mentioned, who we have on the show, he's an activist who just wants to tell the world, your children were made exactly the way God made them. Work with the child that you have. Don't try to, don't, okay, listen to what he has to say about compassion, about, about acquiescing on pronouns and things like that. What message are you sending a girl when you call her a boy, when you call her he, him? You're not kind. You're telling her that she's supposed to be something she's not. That's the opposite of kindness. You're reinforcing the most negative message possible. And then in the school, all the other kids are reinforcing it. And all the teachers and administrators are reinforcing it. Thousands of times over the course of the school year, this vulnerable child, often with autism, often who has been abused or sexually abused, or have whatever trauma going on in their life, family problems, who knows what, well, it's being reinforced over and over and over again that they're supposed to be something they're not. What chance does that kid have of pulling out of that and going against that whole wave of affirmation, all this special attention? You're so special now. We didn't know you existed before, but now you're special because you have a special identity and we're celebrating you. They're not going to pull out of that. They're going to keep going to the next step, the puberty blockers, the hormones. And then they get into their 20s. And what happens? Well, their brain finally stops developing. The prefrontal cortex develops until you're about 25. And just in the last month, we had these, these files that were leaked, the WPATH files, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health. Their own video conferences where clinicians are talking to each other, doctors are talking to each other, and a lot of their own internal messages were leaked. And where I'm from, for example, you've got this endocrinologist at the BC Children's Hospital saying that he follows these kids into their 20s. And, you know, they get to be 25 years old and they want to have a family, but they're sterilized. And he says so callously, yeah, the dog's not doing it for you, is it? Unbelievable. And and this is what we're creating. And and the people who are buying, playing along with this, including the Montgomery County School Board, Board of Education, Montgomery, all of the principals, all of the teachers, all of the counselors, um, and the... the, the complete and total uh, uh, mind meld of the intelligentsia and the elites in Montgomery County, they think they're the compassionate ones. And they're actually destroying these children. And in this <laughs> this case, it could have resulted in this incredibly violent shooting. And it continues. And at what point do we draw the line? At what point do we say, can we please bring some sanity back to this conversation? 
and not isolate those of us who actually want to have an honest conversation about our children and protecting them. Don't isolate us as some sort of bigots because we're recognizing what's going on because we get it. We understand. I, and honestly, I am. It's, it's hard to feel compassion for somebody who is writing that they want to shoot up their school and kill their classmates and little children. But I do have compassion for do. Andrea. Yeah. Andrea is a victim here, too, from a system that, that has exploited her and exploited her mental troubles yes, and Larry, exacerbated them. It is important to remember that state governments all across this nation are criminalizing parents for, for doing what you're saying, which is yeah. standing up against this, pushing back on this, not affirming whatever fantasy life their child has has created in their minds they are they want to put ch parents in jail they want to take away their children from these parents yeah. it is a frightening time we're living in hopefully you know people are saying well you know i think that i think it's changing i think it's shifting i think the sort of you know people are becoming more aware of this don't 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 say that to Virginia. Virginia Democrats don't believe that. And don't and Virginia certainly Democrats. not in the state of Maryland or Montgomery County in particular. Right. By the way, I, I mentioned the convoluted, multi-personality, schizophrenic way the media is reporting this by saying uh, Andrea Yu, Yi, who identifies as Alex and then the, adopting male pronouns. Yeah, there's there's one worse way to cover it. The way CNN covered it. Headline, Maryland high school student arrested after authorities discovered 129-page document detailing school shooting plan, police say. That's the headline. You go through the article, you never hear mention once of the fact of that this is a transgender individual. Unbelievable. That this is an 18-year-old who, who has been dealing with psychiatric issues for quite some time, dealing with, I'm guessing, serious chemical alteration of their brain and their hormones and their bodies to accommodate the transgender activist agenda in this country, and now it results in this, and CNN completely ignores that part of the story. Coming up at 7.15, we're going to speak with Brad Bell from WJLA ABC 7, who's covered this story, and we'll get more details. It's 6.24. Now on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It is 636. Thanks for tuning in. It's 705 Hung Cow running for Senate in Virginia. 715 Brad Bell. He broke the story about this uh, a teen threatening to shoot up a Maryland high school who is also transgendered individual. 735 Alyssa D'Souza, Washington, D.C. resident about the crime wave in Navy Yard. 805 Pat Herity, Fairfax County Supervisor. 815 Nick Minock on a story we're about to get to right now. And then at 835 Representative Chip Roy of Texas on the latest drama out of the House of Representatives. That's all coming up. I'm Larry O'Connor. The special Friday appearance by Julie Gunlock. Good morning, Julie. Good morning. Um, where to start? Well, let's start in Loudoun County. Actually, do we have the Loudoun? No, let's start in Fairfax County. That's what I said. Fairfax County. <laughs> in Fairfax County, Virginia. Well, there's so much going on that Nick Minock is covering. We'll start here with the meeting of the Board of Supervisors as people were begging them not to raise taxes at this trying time with our economy. By the way, I neglected to mention this when we talked about the story, I think it was yesterday or the day before. Where are the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars Fairfax County got from the federal government for COVID relief? Where, right. I, I thought that that was supposed to make up for lost revenues. That was supposed to be, it's it's just gone. They, they, yeah. they, they, they burned through it. Yeah. And now they need more money. They're, I'm sure they set up new programs, new expenses, new costs, and now they got to make up for it somehow so of course we have to pay for it that's right so and we're not even recovered from covid yet right anyway not the disease from the government <laughs> the, the whenever everyone says oh covid was bad not the virus the government was bad right. okay here unlike this board who received a 20 percent salary increase effective 2024 um and i'm not quite sure what is in front of you um but i am here today and when I speak to others and others are speaking to me, I typically look at them. I don't That's the uh, Fairfax mom that we played for you the other day who uh, said, you know, but we're we're making sacrifices. We want to have another child, and I don't think we're going to because we can afford it here in Fairfax County. So here is Fairfax County Chair Jeff McKay while he hid in his office as Nick Minock tried to ask him questions about this tax increase. Yeah. Jeff McKay. Well, I mean, do you want to go on a deadline or? 
Well, we've been requesting an interview with Jeff McKay, as you know, since August 2022. Can he make five minutes to speak to us about the budget? No. He can't. Why? No. Why can't he? I mean, I'll... we're recording right now. Okay, for what purpose? I mean, because we've been asking for an interview with the chair to discuss right. the budget and a lot of other topics, but you and the chair seem to not make any time for us. So he's made time for lots of interviews on lots of different topics, but not with you. Why not? Your standards are beneath credibility. <gasps> really? Correct. Why do you say that? I, I don't really want to explain that, but. Is that your opinion or is that the chair's opinion? That That is my opinion. Nick Minock is actually wow. up for a national award for his investigative <sighs> journalism addressing Loudoun County's use of taxpayer dollars for international travel. He is literally up for an Associated Press award for his oh reporting. And this I... jackass representing wow. the chair of Fairfax County Supervisors. We you won't know, talk honestly... to you because. Yeah. Larry, I had not heard that. I had, that's the first time I heard that that you played it, and I'm sorry to gasp. Yeah. That is just a shocking. You want more? Thing to say it, and yeah, I do. We've got more. Yeah. So it's not the chair's opinion. That's the reason for no interviews. Well, we're going to stay here until he comes out, so we can ask him some questions. How okay. does that sound? That's fine. Okay. When's he coming out? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know exactly. Is he coming out through that door or the front door? I don't know what door he's coming out. Here are some questions we want to ask him. Okay. We've heard from a lot of residents, he's heard from a lot of residents, who are asking him not to raise their taxes again this year. You saw a mother holding her newborn. Jeff McKay was looking down as she gave her testimony. I want to ask him, has that testimony changed his mind about increasing taxes on residents? Also want to ask him, is he going to get back that big raise that he got this year? that he passed last year and he increased taxes last year. So given it's a tough budget year, which I've heard some county supervisors say, is he gonna give back that raise? So the raise was voted on last year. Why is that news? Because that it went into effect this year. Right. It's a tough budget year, as one county supervisor so, said. So the, the raise costs less than two hundred less than three hundred thousand dollars. That's about point oh 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 five percent of the entire budget. Why does he deserve such a big raise when no, other people, that. well, could he come out and explain it for us? Again? Yeah. No. Why? <laughs> That's, um, that is the uh, information officer, chief information officer and press secretary, or chief of staff, excuse me, for Mr. Uh, Mr. McKay, the chair of the Fairfax County Supervisors. Uh, Nick Minock, by the way, whose reporting is substandard, apparently, will be joining us at 815 to talk about this. We have a little bit more. In a public records request, 7 News obtained the salary information of more than 28,000 Fairfax County Public School employees. 7 News discovered a major pay gap between administrators and senior staff and Fairfax County teachers. The top 25 FCPS employees earn more than $200,000, including Superintendent Michelle Reed, who earns a nearly $400,000 salary. The 2024 FCPS teacher salary scale shows teachers starting salary at $56,000 with a bachelor's degree. Yeah, and of course these administrators are all hired to be, you know, the chief diversity officers or the touchy-feely, yeah. good-feeling, experience at school officers who are making, you know, upwards to half a million dollars a year. Yeah, yeah, you know, and this is when people say, oh, teacher raises, we need teacher raises, you know, and, and they use constituents to say, yeah. you know, oh, teachers don't make enough money. Well, then there is an increase, but it all goes to administration. It all goes to these ridiculous people that sit in central office, right. not actually to the teachers or to the paraprofessionals or the people who mm -hmm. help out in the classroom. Well, listen, after that moment at Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, Nick took his cameras to the Loudoun County School Board meeting yesterday and got into another confrontation <laughs> with another press secretary. And we'll share that with you next. It's 6 43. All right, so Nick Minock, Channel 7, WJLA, as I mentioned, after that confrontation with the chief of staff of uh, Board Supervisor of Fairfax County, McKay, saying... So he's made time for lots of interviews on lots of different topics, but not with you. Why not? Your standards are beneath credibility. Really? Correct. <laughs> I like Nick. Really? 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 
Uh, he then oh. took his he took his cameraman up to a Loudoun County committee meeting for the Loudoun County School Board, where they were discussing the move to turn off cameras that we've been covering for quite some time. They no longer want any cameras at the school board meeting, so that parents who are angry at the school board, you know, that their the video then can't be played on Fox News. I guess that's what they're worried about, right? Because they they don't want any transparency and they don't want people to know how bad they are. So, so understand this entire committee meeting is about whether they should allow cameras or not. So Nick Minock, reporter for Channel 7 WJLA, brings his camera to document the meeting. And he's just in the back of the room. He's over at the side he's of the room. He's in a corner. Right? Yeah, he's in a yeah. corner. And he's not blocking it. And this, and this no. guy, not, not a police officer, not a fire inspector, not somebody who has any. Is it, this is the chief information officer, basically. The, the, yeah, one of those people yeah, making uh, $400,000 a year. He, he comes up to, uh, to Nick. Why are you being combative, sir? I'm not being combative. Can you put the camera on him? Because we, we want to get shots of the school board members, and you don't want us to get shots of the school board members? If you want to take the camera off the tripod and move over, that's fine. But the tripod's blocking people's way. Oh, then what if we no, went right over here? No, we have the room set up exactly the way that we do it. So we have a nice media spot for So then why can't the school board members sit right here then? I know. I don't tell the school board members where to sit. The room's set up. Call the room's set up. Tripods go over there. If you want to take the camera off. Well, but respectfully, we have, you don't. Respectfully, we can't have the tripod blocking the okay, way. Okay, what if we, right there, then no one's coming through. That That's the area for the staff and for the school board. So there's going to be people so, standing right here? That's the area for the staff and the school board. I don't see any chairs the right there. tripod can go over there, or you can take it out to your car and hold the camera. So you want close, us to hold the camera place. right here the whole time? Yeah, and make sure you move for people coming in and out. It says, don't you love it how they love the free press and they why, love, yeah, love, why love. is that guy afraid of a tripod? <laughs> exactly. They it's don't so want scary. any good shots. They don't want to, well, yeah. uh, they, they, uh, they stood their ground and then, and then here's the thing during the meeting, here's a little bit of the footage that, uh, Channel 7 got. So we will have a transparent discussion in committee. Um, I also want to remind the community that the cameras have been off since I believe 2021 and during that time, um, the school board was still able to hear from constituents and do the work that's necessary of the school board. Um, school boards are elected to pass policies that serve students, teachers, parents, and the wider community. We cannot fulfill that obligation without focusing on the school board's work. That is uh, April Chandler. Yeah. Yeah. And can we talk? Yeah. Can we talk a little bit about April's laptop? Okay. Yeah. Uh, there, April is a, apparently 13 years old and she has all of these stickers yeah. on her laptop like teenage girls do, right? Yeah. And the stickers themselves are pride. LCPS pride. Loudoun LPC, County Public yes, School pride. Yes. And there's rainbows everywhere and even the writing is in rainbow colors. Well, there's one rainbow in the transgender colors, which are like, yes, you know. Yes, of true. course. And it says, stay persistent. Stay. Yes, stay strong. And nevertheless, she persisted. Of she's, course. She's a champion for us. Yeah. I and, mean, honestly, and while she's talking about stickers. She's talking about transparency in the meetings while they're kicking me out. But his I camera. now realize why they don't want cameras because April doesn't want her embarrassing laptop seen yeah. by the public. Uh, this also, is a, this is an adult, by the way. Nick Nick's going to join us at eight fifteen to talk about this stuff. By the Nick Minock, that is also, by the way, Loudoun County judge yesterday set a new trial date for the former superintendent Scott Ziegler. You know the guy who lied about the transgender uh, sexual assault in the yeah. boardroom and the school the school board then tried to cover up that story as well and yeah. then arrested the father of the girl who was assaulted right. and that was all caught After on they camera. they transferred the boy to another school right. where he And then it happened again. Girl. Yes. Yeah, uh, and, and that all got caught on camera. Right. And that's why they want to take the cameras out of the that's right the board meeting that's the bottom line because they want to be able to do all of those things and cover it all up without you knowing about it. It's 6:54. Making sense of your world. Thanks for taking my call. News Talk 105.9 WMAL. Greatly appreciated. Making sense of the news.